Hi and thank you for joining me again on my channel. So as you can tell by the title of this video, I deleted my SEO plugins very recently. So ah, why are you probably saying that is crazy? Well, I think it's a calculated uh, judgment on my behalf and I'll tell you some of the reasons why. In the last few months, I've been totally focused on improving the speed and performance of my website and trying to improve the click-through rate on some of my articles and some of my content. Now, using SEO plugins has normally been in the, in the past for creating meta descriptions and meta titles, which allows Google to see that your content is relevant for a certain search uh, keyword or a certain topic. Now, I've noticed over the past six months to a year, Google's AI technology has certainly improved and I'm finding now that these SEO plugins are no longer needed. And in fact, you can get far better results by not actually having an SEO plugin running on your website. Now, I know it's a really scary decision to take these plugins off your website. I know I was uh, deliberating for weeks about doing it, uh, but I was finally convinced when I saw some uh, search results and some performances from other people's websites and how uh, they're getting far better um, performance click-through rate by not using these SEO plugins. Now, let me go into a little bit more detail why that is. Now, first of all, there's always going to be some pros and some cons about any piece of software or plugin that you use on your niche website. And certainly Rank Math, which is what I've been using uh, for the past year or so, has some good benefits like auto redirects. Now, if you accidentally change your URL, or you make some uh, edit changes to your uh, website and you don't uh, update it, then it can cause a 404 error and which sends really bad signals to Google. Now with Rank Math, it will automatically sense this and it will redirect that traffic from your old content back over to your new content and the new URL. So it has some really good benefits and certainly that's why I swapped from using Yoast to uh, rank math. But there's always some negatives and some cons about using software and plugins on your websites. And these SEO plugins are no different. I don't know if you remember, about a year ago, Yoast had an issue where they de-indexed a lot of images and it set a lot of websites back months and months and months on their traffic. And it was kind of done uh, a bit a bit naughty really. They didn't kind of admit it, didn't tell anybody. They knew there was an issue, but they didn't come out and say it and they just simply swept it under the rug. Now, it took a lot of time to actually get those images back re-indexed or figure out that there was a fault on their software and uh, for them to fix it and for you to recover. Now, I know this is, is sorted and it's not been an issue in a while, but certainly there's always the vulnerabilities within them software uh, and plugins like that instance. There's also the negative impact you can have on your speed, which was one of the main things that I was concerned about and I'm trying to eliminate all unnecessary plugins on my websites. And SEO plugins, again, in my opinion, are no longer needed going forward in 2020, 2021. But what's the main reason I decided to delete my SEO plugins? Well, it was for meta descriptions and meta titles and to try and improve my click-through rate. Now, let me try and give you an example. This, this is gonna be off the top of my head, so it might be quite random, but. Let's say you've got an article that's 21 cute and adorable pets. You might have a variety of pets within that. You might have cats, dogs, birds, fish. I don't know if fish are cute, but you know what I mean. Uh, and you would normally create your own meta title and description using Rank Math or Yoast. Right, we've all done that. You spend ages coming up with a lovely little meta description that might say something like 21 cute and adorable pets we show you all the best pets for you to own and care for, okay? So there's quite a generic standard meta description. Now, that's quite a broad description, right? You just say 21 pets, you're not saying anything specific. So let's say you're searching Google for cute cats. Well, you might be typing uh, cute cat pictures, right? And your website, your article may come up within that search results. Now, if I looked at that meta description, I saw 21 cute and adorable pets. How do I know it's got cats in? How do I know that's gonna be suitable for me? Because I've created the meta description that just says it's 21 cute pets, right? Nothing specific, no targeted audience. Now, if you leave that to Google's AI 
uh, technology to create their own meta description, what Google will do is it'll go into your piece of content and it will find relevant words and sentences that will target a specific user. So if you happen to have mentioned cats within that content, and I presume 21 cute pets, it's definitely gonna have some cats in, uh, it will create its own meta description. So again, off the top of my head, that description may be something like, we love cute cats and this image of a cute cat is amazing and adorable. Now that's a much better and more targeted meta description for somebody who's searching cute cat images, right? The same works if you were searching for dogs. Let's say you were searching for cute puppies. Then it will again go into that article and it will pull out any relevant words or sentences to make up a meta description that's more suited to that search term, cute puppies. So again, it may something, say something like uh, 10 cute puppy images, uh, we found these on Pinterest or something. It will just target it far better than your 21 cute pets, right? So that's going to increase your click-through rate, which is always a good thing. Now think about it, creating your own meta descriptions not only takes time, limits the amount of viewers and the amount of people that you're going to be able to target. And you're also going against Google's own thought process, right? I mean, we're trying to rank articles within Google Search Console, within Google SERP Index, right? So why are we trying to override what Google's telling us is a good meta description? So we're kind of saying to Google, Here's a great piece of content. I want you to rank that for the right people, the right time, the right places, right? And I want you to use this meta description. I'm not listening to you. I'm not using your suggestions. I mean, that seems crazy, doesn't it? And it seems intuitive to counteract what Google's telling us to do when we're asking it to rank our content in its search index. So for me, I finally just deleted the uh, SEO plugins and now allowing Google to create its own meta descriptions and its own meta titles, better targeted to the right people, searching the right topics and keywords. And what's the results? Well, it's pretty much early days, but I certainly saw no decrease in traffic. In fact, I saw the traffic go up slightly and certainly on the topics like 21 best this, 101 best that, them type of topics because they cater for a wider audience than my one meta description was that I created. Now there is one thing you need to remember and one thing, a disclaimer, that I kind of need to tell you. If you decide to delete these uh, SEO plugins, and I'm not saying you should, it's something I'm trying. Like I say, I always bring you along on my journey, whatever I do, I try and involve you. Uh, and then you can make an educated decision whether you'd like to do that. You must remember if you do delete them, you can automatically delete and drop your sitemap from Google Search Console. Rank Math particular, I use Rank Math to actually index my sitemap and by pressing delete, it drops that off of your Google Search Console. So you need to remember if you do deactivate any of these plugins, you'll need to manually add your own sitemap. So to show you how to do that, I've just done a quick screenshot of me actually physically deleting one of my uh, Rank Math SEO plugins on one of my niche websites and creating a sitemap and adding it to Google Search Console. It's very easy, very simple. Don't worry about that. As long as you remember to add it, you'll be good. So let's head over to the computer now. I'll show you how to do that. And then hopefully uh, it makes it easier for you if you do decide to delete your SEO plugins. So here we are in the dashboard of one of my niche websites. And as you can see, we have Rank Math SEO activated on the site. So all you do to take that off is simply click the deactivate. It'll ask you why you don't want it anymore. Uh, and I'm just gonna put, I don't no longer need the plugin. Click submit and that will instantly deactivate your plugin. As we can see here, Rank Math is now deactivated. So what you'll then need to do is you'll need to add your sitemap back onto the website and submit that to Google Search Console. The way you do that, the plugin I use for that, which uh, again, yes, I know it's another plugin, but it's a really, really light plugin used by hundreds of thousands of websites. There it is, Google XML Sitemap, it's, it's called, and as you can see, it's got two million plus uh, active installations, and it was updated a month ago, so it's a very safe, secure plugin to have. 
you simply click install now and once that's installed simply click activate click the settings tab you'll be redirected to this page here and as you can see the url for your new sitemap is here and also there's a little uh, line here that says notify search en engines about your sitemap so you simply click that and it will now say ping was executed and it will show you the um, result so it was executed today on this time and then all you simply do is just copy this URL, head over to your um, Google search console and under the site map tab, simply paste the new URL there and click submit. And it's as simple as that. It will then tell Google to go um, that you've got a new site map and you're asking it to go crawl your website through that new site map. So there you go, quick and simple to do. If you do decide to go and delete your SEO plugins, like I say, I'm not telling you you should, but it's certainly something you should consider. And like I say, I will bring you my results, uh, what I see in the, in the future. I've left an SEO plugin on some of my websites and taken it off some of the others. So I can have a bit of a comparison and a bit of a case study on it, see what the difference is, see if that click-through rate goes up. So hope you like that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I produce about two uh, videos a week and uh, hopefully some of these will help you grow your website and help you get a, a passive income or bring in more income for you and your family to enjoy and hopefully have more time to spend with your friends and loved ones. That's, at the end of the day, that's why we're here and that's why I do these videos. So. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.